This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. The bracket is now set for Euro 2024, and the round of 16 is just around the corner, so it's now time to dive in and break down top bets across the round of 16. To do that for today, we got Austin Cass on the show. He'll join us to break down implications of the brackets and futures he likes and his bets of the round of 16. Then I'll talk NASCAR and Nashville later on. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel research joined here as mentioned by austin cast you can find him on twitter at austin cast find his great work over at fanduel research as well austin pleasure to have you back on the show for today how you doing i'm doing really well how are you doing jim I'm doing great. Uh, we've been talking to Ed Fang here about uh, Euro 2024. Ed is on vacation for this week, so got to call the bullpen, bring up the closer, Austin Cass, and I'm delighted to get you back in here. But Austin, how has uh, Euro 2024 been for you so far? Yeah, uh, it's it's been good. Yeah, so I, I'm, a, I'm partial to club soccer, but it's just nice to have some soccer going on this summer. Have you been watching um, um, Copa America as well? Because I feel like just like a loaded soccer calendar right now. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Have you been watching uh, Copa America as well? I have. Yeah. Uh, it's it's soccer's basically been on all day at my house each day. Which you know, I'm not sure how my wife feels about it, but me and the kids have loved it. <laughs> Well, that's good to hear. Well, we're going to talk some about, about some plenty of soccer for today, focusing on that round of 16 in Euro 2024, letting you know takeaways from the brackets, who got bumped up or bumped down, aka, uh, as a hint, it's not good for my futures that I've got out there. We'll talk about that and round of 16 bets that Austin likes in just one second, followed by NASCAR and Nashville. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the Covering the Spread podcast feed wherever you get your podcast. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to talk to Austin Swain about UFC 303's favorite bets across the next pay-per-view matchup. I will talk about that tomorrow. Break down the main events and much more to get you ready for that. To get that at and all of our shows as they're posted, make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. And if you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating and review as well. The dog days are here, and the coolest place to get in on the MLB action is FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus every day. That's right. There is something for everyone every day, all summer long. You can score bigger winnings in any inning with a profit boost, snag bonus bets for home runs every Tuesday, or even beat the heat with no sweat bets. So head over to FanDuel and start making the most of your summer. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Must be 18 plus in D.C. and 21 plus in present in select states. Opt-in required. Wager requirements apply. Bonuses awarded as not with trouble bonus bets or profit boost tokens. Restrictions apply, including bonus expiration, see terms, and conditions at fanduel.com slash sportsbook. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, D.C., Iowa, Kentucky, Michigan, New Jersey, North Carolina, Ohio, Pennsylvania. Illinois, Tennessee, Vermont, Virginia, and Wyoming. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona, 188-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat Connecticut, 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana, 1-800-522-4700 visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas, 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana, visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland, 1-800-GAMBLER.NET in West Virginia, 1-800-522, oopsies, forgot to cross that one off. Hope is here for the gambling helpline, ma.org, or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts, or call 1-877-HOPE-NY, or text HOPE-NY in New York. Now, Austin, we'll talk the round of 16 specifically here in just one second, but first, group play is completed. We got to see each team out there for three separate matches what were your biggest takeaways from what you saw in the group stage of Euro 2024? So for me personally, it's um, just really been staggering the difference um, in like the level of play between this tournament and top club soccer, um, especially attacking wise, like passing sequences, like team cohesion and attack. Uh, it's just been a lot lower than, than top club soccer. 
think the best examples have been France, England, Belgium. Uh, France and England, especially, they're two of the top teams in the tournament, two of the betting favorites coming in, loaded with attacking talent. England has 2.2 expected goals so far, according to FB Ref's XG model. France's XG numbers are better, but they have two goals through three matches, and the goals were an own goal and a penalty. So just overall, the top sides, um, they've struggled to look as smooth and as potent as what we see from club sides, which makes sense given how little practice time international teams get together. But I think for me, over these next couple of weeks, I want to see are some of these top teams going to improve as the tourney goes on and take it up a level now that the stakes are higher? I'm not sure, but that's kind of been my takeaway from the group stages so far. And the tough part for those top teams is a lot of them are not getting a rest because we take a look at the bracket here, which was a reveal with the the final uh, group play matches being played yesterday. There is a a group of death beyond the group stage somehow uh, for this bracket. So when you look at the bracket, Austin, the way things shook out, any teams get a boost up or down for you with the way things broke at the bracket? Yeah, for sure. So I just <laughs> talked about how bad England have been in attack. And someone out there might have looked up futures and saw that England's the tournament favorite right now. So what's this guy talking about? Well, they're 350 to win it all. Some of that has to do with the talent they have and odds makers probably expecting them to figure it out at some point. But a big part of it is what side of the bracket they ended up on. They're on the much easier side. Germany, Spain, France, Belgium, and Portugal are all on one side and England's on the other side. As a result, in the name the finalist markets on FanDuel Sportsbook, the four matchups with the shortest odds all feature England in the final. So the odds have clearly baked in England's draw here, and everyone else on that side of the draw got a big lift as well, especially the Netherlands. They're probably the two best teams on that side of the draw. Um, and they they haven't really been that impressive either, but they wouldn't run into England until the semis. So I think Netherlands and England are the two sides that got the biggest boost. And the tough part is, I was talking before about my futures bets. Uh, these are from when we had Ed Fang on the show. And he was talking about he liked Spain to win it all, 8-1. Uh, to one. They've looked really good so far. And that that's looked good so far. Uh, and also Jamal Musiala uh, to win the Golden Boot, 46-1 to one at FanDuel Sportsbook. I got him at 80. And the problem is, Spain and Germany would play each other in the round of eight. So, boo-hoo for me. If they both advance, I guess it does ensure that one of them will be in the semi or in the round of four at least. So there is some benefit, but just a brutal draw for them. And as Austin said, uh, that is why England is plus 350 at FanDuel Sportsbook. They are currently the betting favorites uh, to win it all, followed by Spain at plus 390. Then France and Germany are both plus 550 right now, again, at FanDuel Sportsbook. So looking at the futures market, also, any futures you want to snag before we get the round of 16 underway? So I'm very interested in the golden boot race. Um, it's really wide open, like with a capital W. It's the leading goal scorer right now is Georgius Mikadudze of Georgia. He has three goals. Georgia plays Spain next, so he might not score another goal. It's very open. A lot of the favorites coming in, Kane and Mbappe, have been pretty quiet so far. So... One big game from anybody, even someone who has no goals right now, is going to really shake this up. So going back to what we just talked about with England and the Netherlands, I think there's a very good chance those two teams play in the semis. So I'm interested in their top attackers in this market, which are, I'll, I'll start with Harry Kane for England. He's plus 800. One goal, so he has a little ground to make up, but he can do that in a hurry. He takes penalties. And if they play at least four more matches, which is obviously a huge factor in this market, um, I think he's going to end up winning the golden boot. And he could have that one big game here in the round of 16 against Slovakia. England are minus 260 money line favorites. And part of me thinks they've taken so much negative criticism for how they've played that at some point the pendulum's going to swing and they're just going to put a hurting on somebody. And that might happen here in the round of 16. And if Kane got two goals or a hat trick, these odds would change drastically. Uh, um, it's a little bit of a similar story for Netherlands. They've got a friendly path and a nice round of 16 matchup against Romania. And then going by the odds, they're most likely to face Austria in the quarterfinals. Austria allowed 5.2 expected goals in the group stage, the fourth most of any team in the tournament. So for Netherlands, like Cody Gakpo, he's plus 1,400. And then Memphis Depay is plus 3,600. Uh, Gakpo's got two goals already, which which is nice. So he's just one back. 
And then he's he's kind of their key cog, plays like a number 10 attacking midfield role for them. Memphis is at much longer odds, and he's got one goal, and he starts at striker. Um, I'm not sure who's going to take penalties between them. They haven't taken one in this tourney yet in the Euro qualifying. They each took one apiece. But if it's Memphis who takes them, the plus 36 odds are too long. So I think you can make a case for Kane, Gakpo, or Depay, and basically it's banking on Netherlands and England to meet in the semifinals and one of them getting to the finals and getting four more games here. Going with the odds factor on that, and I think Memphis is my favorite one just because he's plus 3,600, which is so much longer than Gakpo's or Kane's. And I think there's a decent chance he's going to take penalties for him. Okay, so the three guys Austin likes in the Golden Boot market: Memphis to pay uh, thirty-six to one for the Netherlands, also with the Netherlands. Cody Gakpo fourteen to one, and then Harry Kane eight to one. Uh, one goal thus far for Kane, but as Austin said, the path for him much better than the path for guys like Mbappe, Musiala, and Morata, who are looking pretty good, but in pretty tough situations overall for the way things uh, broke with them on the draw. Let's take a look now at the round of 16 individual matches, Austin. When you look at those round of 16 matches, any traditional markets where you see value in uh, this round? I actually see some value in the very first round of 16 match, which is Saturday at noon between Italy and Switzerland. Um, I like Switzerland to win in regulation at plus 240. Um, they'll also show their odds to qualify for the next round there, which factors in uh, extra time or penalties, but I like them just to win in the 90 minutes plus the normal like stoppage time, the five or six minutes they have at the end. Um, I think these sides are actually pretty evenly matched. So getting switched on at plus 240 is very appealing. Historically, Italy have a reputation being able to grind out results and being very tough to knock out in these knockout rounds. It's mostly well-deserved. And they showed that in the last Euros when they lifted the trophy despite not playing particularly great. And they, but they have not been very good so far this tourney. In their last match, they needed a late goal just to get out of the group phase. Actually have a negative expected goal differential. They've given up 3.5 XG and scored only 2.6. So their attack's been an issue. The defense hasn't been very good either. It's not a great combination. Uh, Switzerland can take advantage of it. Switzerland have a solid uh, 4.0 XG so far through three matches. So I think some name brand recognition with Italy, history might be factoring into this line a little too much. I think you could actually make a case that Switzerland should be slight favorite here, which is what Massey ratings has. Massey ratings gives Switzerland 37% win odds compared to 33% for Italy. So all in all, I think Italy are a little bit overvalued. Switzerland are slightly undervalued. You could opt to play it safe and take Switzerland to advance at plus 122, which, as I said, includes them advancing in any manner, including extra time or penalties. But I prefer Switzerland to win at plus 240 in regulation. That's in the three-way money line at FanDuel Sportsbook to get them. Uh, Switzerland to win in 90 minutes, plus stoppage time, plus 240 in that market. And as Austin mentioned, if you want them to advance instead, they are plus 122 to do that, where you do get the benefit if they win via penalties or extra time, they also could advance that way. What about player props, Austin? Which of those stand out to you across the round of 16? Well, it's been a month since we've touched on the goal or assist market and covering the spread. So I think we have to go back to it. Uh, in the Spain-Georgia match, I'm interested in Pedri to score or assist at plus 125. Spain have been excellent so far. For me, they've been the best team in the tournament so far, them or Germany. Uh, they've totaled 5.5 XG through three matches. They should control this match against Georgia and create loads of chances. Georgia is an amazing story. It's their first ever major tournament to just World Cup. They got out of the group stage, which is incredible. They beat Portugal last round to do that. But they're going to be really overmatched here. They gave up 6.0 expected goals in the group stage. That was the most among all teams in the tournament. Spain are minus 310 to score at least twice. So they should create a lot of chances. They should have the ball a lot. Pedri plays in kind of a number eight, like a little bit of attacking midfield role. And he has two players who play next to him, Rodri and Fabian Ruiz, who are, are a little better defensively, which kind of frees him up to get forward into goal-scoring areas. He's got one assist through two matches, and he put two shots on target in another game. So I like him at these plus 125 odds to score assists, and I also think his anytime goal odds of plus 360 are just a touch long as well. 
Okay, so a couple of shots already for Pedri uh, for Spain as they take on Georgia, plus an assist there as well. So if you want the score or assist market, that is plus 125 at FanDuel Sportsbook. The anytime goal score market that Austin mentioned, uh, Pedri potentially also a bit undervalued there, uh, now plus 350 at FanDuel Sportsbook for that one. That is Austin Cass. Make sure you check him out on X at Austin Cass. You can find his work over at FanDuel Research. Austin, a pleasure to have you back on the show for today. Enjoy both the uh, Euro 2024 and Copa America. And we'll talk to you once again in the very near future. Sounds good. Thank you, Jim. All righty. Again, you can find Austin on X at Austin Cass to get all of his work as well over at FanDuel Research. Before we close up for today, do you want to dive into some NASCAR for this weekend? They are out in Nashville. It's a triple header. We got uh, the Cup Series, Xfinity Series, and the Truck Series all in action for this weekend. And when we talk about the Cup Series for this weekend, I'm seeing value primarily on drivers who are very good on concrete, which makes sense because Nashville is a concrete track. My model cares about that. And I think that sports books tend to undervalue the concrete angle in general. And when you look at recent concrete races in the NASCAR Cup Series, one driver has won each of the past three. That driver is Denny Hamlin, who is plus 650 to win a FanDuel Sportsbook, and I think he's actually undervalued at that number. My model has Hamlin at 14.4% to win this race. His implied odds at plus 650 are 13.3%. And again, he's won three in a row on concrete tracks. If we look at Nashville specifically, the Cup Series has run here just three times, and in those three races, Kyle Larson has led the most laps, but Denny Hamlin ranks second in laps led there, and he's led 80-plus laps in both next-gen era races at Nashville. So we're getting a driver who has already won twice on concrete this year. He's been very good at Nashville, and we know the overall form for Hamlin is tremendous. So I want Denny Hamlin plus 650 to win this race in Nashville. I think that's a very good value to get on a driver who is – already a three-time winner so far this year. It's been a pretty top-heavy season, so if I get value on one of the top guys, I'm going to take that. We'll do that with Hamlin for this race. The form on the second driver I want to target is uh, less exciting because he's currently outside the playoffs and showing a lot of frustration, very visible frustration. That is Kyle Busch. He is 7-1 to to finish top five, and I think there's a value. And, you know... A lot of his issues so far have been bad luck. He was running inside the top 10 in Sonoma, running inside the top 10 in Gateway when he got caught up in crashes, not of his own doing. In Iowa, he had a mechanical failure. So it's been a lot of bad luck. It has not been a lack of speed always that has uh, brought Kyle Busch down. Last week, he wrecked himself under caution. You know, what are you going to do? So there's a lot of frustration there. Maybe that boils over to a point where Bush is just untouchable at a certain point, but his best upside has come using the rules package they'll use this week in Nashville. He had a top five finish in Dover, also won the pole there, led about 34 or so laps. He also led double-digit laps in Vegas, Kansas, and Gateway. All three of those tracks are tracks that use the same intermediate rules package. And in Nashville specifically, he's led double-digit laps in all three races there, including last year, which was his first year at this track with Richard Childress races. Even in downgraded equipment, Bush was still pretty competitive in this race last year. I've got Bush 20% for a top five. His implied odds are 12.5%. So I think there is value in Kyle Bush to finish top five. I also do show value in him to finish top 10. Those odds are plus 210 at FanDuel Sportsbook. I've got him 39% for a top 10 versus 32% implied. So if you want to take the safe route, you can. If you want to go crazy with a win, I do show value in Bush to win at 50 to one. So I think the top five is the best market, but Kind of pick your poison with Kyle Busch uh, this week, but in general, do think he is pretty undervalued. Two top 10 bets I like for this race. Both are on drivers who have shown good form on concrete, whether it be in the Cup Series or in lower series. The first one being Ricky Stenhouse Jr., 7-1 to one for a top 10. Stenhouse has always been really good at Bristol, another concrete track. This year in Dover, he was running well, scored points in the first stage, but then got caught up in a wreck and did not finish that race. Also was runner up in Dover, I believe in 2022, which was the first year of the next gen uh, car. So we've seen him run well in concrete in the next gen, good on concrete in general at Bristol at Nashville. The first race they ran here was back in 2021 and Stenhouse finished sixth in that race. So he's always been good on concrete. He's been decent so far this year and we're getting him at uh seven to one for a top 10 those implied odds are 12.5 percent i have stenhouse at 14.6 percent for a top 10 so let's take stenhouse top 10 at seven to one 
uh, look around to, to shop around and make sure you're getting the best price on Stenhouse as well. The other one is Carson Hosevar. Haven't seen him a lot in Cup Series on concrete, but one of the races he did run on concrete was at Bristol in the Cup Series last year, filling in uh, for Legacy Motor Club in that race. And Hosevar ran well the entire race. He had a 13th place average running position, and he finished 11th in that one. So really good showing from Hosevar there, even before he had much experience in the Cup Series car. Now he's got more experience, and he's going to a track where he won at last year in the Truck Series, led the final 40 laps of that race, to get the win. If we look at Hosevar this year in the Cup Series with Spire Motorsports, both of his top 10s have come on tracks using this rules package. Both come at mile and a half tracks, so he's been at his best in this rules package, going to a track where he won last year in the Truck Series, and has shown good form on concrete in the Cup Series as well. So... I've got Hosevar at 12.2% for a top 10. His implied odds are 8.3%. So actually a bit more value on Hosevar than on Stenhouse. I prefer the Stenhouse one personally, depending on what you, where you can get him at. But I think both these guys are good values this week. So Cup Series bets for me at Nashville. I Car Carson Hosevar top 10 at 11 to 1. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. top 10 at 7 to 1. Kyle Busch top 5 at 7 to 1. And then Denny Hamlin to win. That is plus 650. All those available at FanDuel Sportsbook. That is all that we have here for today on Covering the Spread. As mentioned, back with you once again tomorrow, talking some UFC with Austin Swim. To get that and all these shows as they are posted, make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. You can also find us on the FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV+. Plus. Big thank you once again to Austin Cass for joining us. Find him on X at Austin Cass. I am on X at Jim Sonis. You can also find FanDuel Research on X at FanDuel Research. Want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your bets across Thursday. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down some UFC. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 